Hi everyone! Hello family! I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Maya and if you're new here please subscribe and if you're returning I love having you back. I hope you're doing well and yes we're here with another video today. Today's video is going to be a really fun one. It's going to be a compliment, a compli compilation, 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 Complimation. You know what I'm trying to say. It's going to be a collection of some DIY projects that I'm going to do. Today is Thursday. I think it's the 29th and I'm just feeling really, really good. Hi. Hi, Bubba. Bubba's feeling good. I'm wearing this very flattering hat to show you a surprise. I guess you could consider this the first DIY of the video, but yes i did something something different are you wanting to see what it is do you want to see what it is <laughs> let's see you want the reveal here we go drum roll <laughs> this is the reveal i dyed my eyebrows <sighs> i love it so much i think it's so pretty and so understated i just feel like i don't want to wear makeup i just want because you can see so much more of the face you feel like so that's really nice i'm loving how it turned out so that's the first diy the second diy is super fun i'm going to be making clay rings out of baker's clay so we'll see how that turns out my friend and i are going to both do it so that's super fun I've seen this recipe from a few YouTubers, my, the main one being that curly top, Jasmine. I study their content, I love it, and I love everything they're doing. So I'm inspired by them. I'm going to credit them to this idea and follow the recipe. And yeah, let's see how it turns out. Let's go. So I'm starting off with making the clay. You need water, salt, and flour. Let's mix it up. The first one I made is this one. I really enjoyed the swirly patterns of clay rings that are really popular right now. I don't think this came out the best, but yeah, I think she's cute. I'm definitely gonna rock her. I'm gonna keep her on for the rest of this video. Next one is this one. It has some jewels on it. I painted it a nice electric blue. And yeah, I think she came out really pretty. A lot of the rings, some of them got, a lot of them got deformed and these ones I just made really big so they fit on my thumbs and they're loose like this one's pretty loose. So that's the only thing is it's too big for my thumb. So definitely if I go to like a, a place where that's very busy, I could see myself losing this. 
But if you know your measurements, not like myself, I'm sure you're fine. Ooh, I have this one. It's a pinky ring. Nice donut swirl. I like the colors. And that one really fits snug. So that one's nice. And we have this baby, which I'm gonna actually go over with clear polish or more resin because I had to glue um, glue some beads back on there. And I also had to sand the insides because the circle was so uneven. I could get it on my finger pretty easily, but getting it off was a nightmare. So let's see if we can get it off. I sanded it for a while, so. So the sand went all over like the the glue. So it's now looking a little bit dirty, but I think it's still really cool. Let's try to take it off. Ah, got it off. I'm gonna wear it because I'm so excited I can wear it. I made all these rings. Two more rings to show you. This one, polka dots. Again, another swivel. Unfortunately, I used resin on this one and I put it on the back of newspaper. So it kind of looks cool, very artsy, but yes, it has newspaper on the back, but very cool. It, it is too big. It kind of fits. It's a thumb ring as well. Here's another thumb ring. It's yellow with beads. Yeah, I think that's the last ring. Yes. So I'm very into the clay jewelry, as you can see. I think it's so fun. Shout out to this brand, Thinkamajig. The creator is so nice, Kristen. Yay! And yeah, I hope they have a lot of success with their business. These rings I got from Depop. The ones that I did not tell you I made, I got from Depop. Okay, so continuing on with our clay sculptures, I made this candle holder. Here's the candle. I made this candle holder. Very cute. But we do see, I'm sure you can see there's a crack on the side right here. That's okay. It happened when I was trying to stick the candle in. It kind of cracked it. But yes, this is what she looks like. Ooh, there she is. This is what she looks like. I like her a lot. I really enjoy the different colors of just like random patterns that clay makes when you just mold it together it looks so fun and just playful so i put this on my mantle very very happy with her my partner made a weed leaf that is still sticky with resin so yay i think we're gonna i think it'd be cute to make like an ornament out of this um but yeah just put it on like the wall someplace just to let people know what we're all about here in this household. They also made this caterpillar. Here's this cute little guy. <laughs> this caterpillar, they don't have a name yet, I don't think. And they're on some flower, some pressed flowers that they glued some, to some cardboard. Very creative, very creative, very nice. The next thing I have to show you that I made from clay is this beautiful heart. Oh, I wanted to make it like a tray, like a catch-all tray, but you know, now I'm thinking it'd be better to just put on the wall, like a wall decoration. I placed some rose petals on the outside just to give, emphasize the energy of love in this art piece but yeah it's just gonna go like in my collage of photos of, in the living room and i'm just gonna put it in the center of that and i'll do a cutaway of what it'll look like i think it'll look cute and this is what the back looks like very interesting <laughs> the clay really stuck to the pan so if you're gonna do this think about you know how, how you're gonna make it not be stuck to the pan and stuff um and I, I yeah i just put resin on this to make it all shiny like glass very cool the next thing I have to show you is this little mushroom guy. Little cute mushy mushroom that I made. It's pretty self-explanatory. This one, the top did come off, but I put resin on the inside and stuff and then stuck it on here. So maybe it's just stuck like that, which I'm not mad at. So this might just be its final form, but I originally made it with the cap being detachable. So yeah, but I put resin on it, so kind of just stuck it all together. I really like this to put on another DIY I will show you later, 
but I just love this as decor. It reminds me similar to one of those like mushroom glass paperweights, except, you know, this costs me $5 to make or something as opposed to 300 or whatever, however many much it is. So yay, I love that. Next, I have an assortment of things. Fruit, ah, to go along with the whole decor. Just along with the mushroom paperweights, I love fake fruit decorations that are made out of glass typically. So I thought, hey, why don't I make them? So I made a strawberry and a banana. The banana is like one of those like smaller Indian bananas, or I don't know exactly what you would call these small bananas. If you know, let me know. Um, but not the American ones, the small ones. And a very, very oversized strawberry. Yeah, it's very big. It's almost the size of a banana, so that's huge. Imagine a strawberry this big. Ooh. And we have a little, little crab apple here. Yeah, about the size of the strawberry. So we have a nice fruit salad here, and I just placed them on the DIY I'm going to show you later and it looks so cute and I love it and it's something I made so it's not like detached like I bought it from Etsy or something it's something I made that's really nice woo woo DIY alrighty two more clay things to show you and then we'll be all done with the clay DIY so the next two things I have to show you are ashtrays these ashtrays are really, really cool because they have pressed flowers on the inside. And I just, you guessed it, put resin on them. Resin's my best friend for this video. I used it for all of the clay projects. So yeah, this one is just the clay colors. We did not paint it. I just put the flowers in and put the resin on top. So it's a cute little ashtray. This is what the back looks like. Not very, you know, again, like baked gone wrong, a little bit burned. But I think it's really cute that I like the hue, the burned look. Hmm, looks like art or something. And then I have this one, which is very big. It's like the biggest ashtray I've ever seen. If you could eat off this, I'm sure it could be used as a plate, but I don't think you can eat off resin. It hasn't even dried completely. It's still on my fingers. So yeah, and again, back of, news it's newspaper on here. So I love it. I love having the flower energy embedded in it. I think that it's just so sweet and it makes me feel connected to the flowers, to that earth element, which is so nice for tour season. It just feels so lovely, um, especially right now for tour season. So I love this. I would love to make someone a gift for some reason and give someone this. I think it's just such a fun gift. So if you're interested in making ashtrays, Baker's clay works really well. And yeah, here's an idea of some pressed flowers. The striped paints reminds me of this one potter, potter, pot, potterist, someone who does pottery on Instagram that I follow. She's Danish and she does a lot of this type of colorway and a simple design and I love her work. So that reminds me of her. The next DIY I have to show you is clothing. So I had this turtleneck that I really didn't wear a lot just because it made me look kind of frumpy. I love the way the color is and I love everything about it, but just the way it fits on my torso, it just didn't suit me. So I thought I could DIY upcycle it somehow. I love this top I'm wearing now. It has a cutout. I thought maybe I could just do like a cutout sort of thing. But then I was like, hmm, that seems like too complicated. So I decided just to cut out literally the whole torso of it and just have it be one of those cool sweaters that just have like the turtleneck and the sleeves. I love that because now I can get to layer it. I don't have the bulk of, you know, putting the whole thing under an outfit. I can just put the top on here. And someone like that I wore this around told me that it reminded them of uh, in the 80s or something. I guess people used to put these types of shirts underneath stuff to show that they were like layering underneath their stuff. So I thought that was so cute. So you can wear it on top or underneath clothes, like a t-shirt or something. I love it. I think the color works really well, but yes, it's so cute. I did thumb holes <laughs> in the sleeves too, just cause when sleeves 
go over your hands. It's such a vibe. You know, you just feel like so cool. Like, so I love that. I love this DIY. I'm so proud of myself for trying it out, trying something new, not being afraid to take a risk because I think it turned out pretty cool. I'm happy with it and I have nothing like it in my wardrobe. So I feel like I'm gonna wear it a lot more. This is a great example of why upcycling stuff is so helpful because you save resources, money, and you get to use, reuse something that you already have. Next piece I have to show you is another clothing item that I have that I upcycled and it is this radical green jumpsuit. So originally the buttons were itty bitty teeny tiny super small and every time I wore it the jumpsuit would just like bust open and my ladies would say hello when I didn't really want them to so I figured if I get bigger buttons I would make it more secure and stuff and I could reuse those buttons on something else that I love so here's the finished look here are the buttons I chose really nice spring pastel colors I love the the colorfulness of this and the artisticness of them favorite button is of course the apple button but they're all a little bit different than each other i love it so and i definitely tried it on i'll show you here and it definitely is so much more secure i love it so i feel like i'll be able to definitely wear this out in public again because i never really did because it was always like honestly like a, a risk for exposing myself so i'm very happy i can wear this now it took like an hour to do it was very quick to sew buttons on there i was procrastinating on it so i'm glad i did this video so i had a reason to finish this diy project Alrighty, I have one more DIY to share with you for this video and that DIY took me the longest time. That's, it took us a week to make my partner and I and it is a tile table. So I've been watching people make tile tables and seeing them for so long and I love them. I lust after them. So I've been wanting to make a tile table for I would say a few months now and we finally got around to it thanks to this video so uh, yes we had a lot of hiccups and I actually recorded us talking about it earlier this week I'll insert this footage here was talking about their experience making the table so to make this I started with an 8 foot 2 by 12 it was cut into a 4 foot and two 2 feet pieces just put together in an upside down U shape to be the legs and the table used wood glue and then once that dried I just put some screws in it and then and when we got the tiles we realized that the tiles were wider than the thickness of the wood so I decided to double up the wood thickness with another 2 by 12 but that ended up not working because the sides of the wood weren't perfectly straight so they weren't matching up flush so instead I use two by fours on either side to double it up the thickness. Again, I used wood glue and screws for that after sanding them down a little bit. By this point, it was very heavy, even without the tiles. So we brought it upstairs to do the last stuff up there because with the tiles, it'll be even heavier. We started putting on the tiles with the mortar. <laughs> the first time around didn't work out. We mixed too much mortar for the amount we were doing and it dried before we could get everything on. And the mortar was warm and so oh, we, yeah, we used the temperature of the mortar affects, like if it's hotter, it will affect how the, quickly it will dry. The, the water that was mixed with the mortar. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to scrape off all that old mortar, <laughs> start again with that, um, and then doing it in increments instead. Mm -hmm. That worked a lot better. But the, cool water. The, the last few were still really hard because the tools were so gunked up with dried mortar. So how long in all would you say this project has taken us? How many hours? Versus how, how long you thought it would take you, us? Hours of work or mm -hmm. like... Days, hours. It's been really spaced out, so I'd say it's probably been like 10 hours of work maybe. But spaced out because you have to wait for glue to dry wait for, for glue 24 to dry. hours. So give yourself some days just because figuring out the dimensions, figuring out unforeseen setbacks will occur when you're creating anything. What have you learned for the future? I mean, I guess I didn't really learn this, more of just a reminder that 
any project that's something you're new to will have setbacks and you'll have to adapt as you go. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I can't wait to see the finished look. We still yeah. have the grout to do, so we're gonna do that and then be done, oh, yeah. let it dry and then be done. Uh, Clean it off. And then the other step before the grout is sawing off the, the very oh, bottom yeah. of the wood because it was a little bit too long so the tiles uh, just left a gap at the bottom and <laughs> Maya doesn't like how it looks. Mm -mm, not at all. So we have to hand saw the table to be yeah. the length we want it to be and then we grout. And then after that, we had to put paddings underneath the table so that it could slide on the hardwood. And yeah, that was pretty much it. We could just clean it off, make it look nice, and admire our hard work. It was so worth it. I love it. I think it was well worth the price. In all, it was under 300 for sure to make the tables, around 200 with materials and, and all the necessary things that it took to make. And in terms of work time, it was about 10 hours, I would say, of constant straight up workload. I'm very happy with this and I hope you enjoyed this little video showing you some stuff I've been making recently. I love seeing what people are making and inspired by. And I hope you can share with me something that you're inspired by if you'd like. And yes, please follow me on those socials to check out what I'm doing. I am making more music right now, so follow my Patreon and hear what I'm working on on the harp. And I'll see you in the next video, friends. Love you so much. Remember, it's always best to make something yourself or to upcycle something you have just to save resources and save some money too. Love you, friends. Bye.